Hey there creepy peeps, my name is Nightmare Maven and I love talking about horror. I'm also a lesbian, so let's talk about lesbian vampires. If you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. That was an interesting way for me to come out. If you're returning, well then you probably already knew that anyway, so welcome back. Education is back. I'm gonna try and make some of these like horror education videos about general topics occasionally as opposed to just single movies just to mix it up a little bit. If you are newer here because I haven't done one of these in a while, I came out well, like this month last year, I think it was like the beginning of November last year, I kind of started this series as a way to like educate myself and just, you know, be more knowledgeable in queer horror. Um, not that I had never seen a queer horror movie ever in my life, but talk about how these movies are situated in the realm of LGBTQ plus horror movies. Or media, I guess, because I feel like I should throw some books in here at some point because I, I love books clearly. But anyway, today we are talking about lesbian vampires because I wanted to do some research on this trope because I feel like when we talk about LGBTQ plus horror movies or queer horror movies, this is the only like sub genre of that that really stands alone, like stands on its own. Like if we just talk about any queer horror movies in general, that obviously spans a lot of different subgenres. So you have like a smattering of slasher movies, a few psychological thrillers, maybe a werewolf movie, but then you have lesbian vampire movies and there are so many of those that there are just entire lists on Letterboxd of just lesbian vampire movies. So I wanted to know where all this came from just to start out. Some of the earliest influences of the lesbian vampire trope genre, whatever we want to call it, dates all the way back to a, a real person, uh, Countess Elizabeth Batori, uh, who was a purported serial killer who targeted young women. As gossip tends to do, word got around that the Countess was bathing in the blood of her victims in order to stay young. Um, of course, such rumors didn't really start until after the Countess's death. While she definitely wasn't the first, we have Vlad Tepesh, who, who was also a very real person and kind of helped fuel superstitions about vampires or the undead walking the earth. <laughs> So the Countess is a name to remember because we'll come back to her. Another name that we need to remember when we talk about lesbian vampire movies is Carmilla. Carmilla is a novella written by Sheridan Le Fanu, uh, which predates Bram Stoker's Dracula by about 25 years. The novella follows the titular character, a vampire who feeds off a young woman, Laura. There have been a few like legitimate direct adaptations of this novella, although you hear Carmilla being thrown around I feel like in pretty much any discussion about lesbian vampire movies uh, <laughs> kind of in the same way anytime you have a vampire movie in general come out it gets compared to Dracula. So some of the most mentioned examples of lesbian vampire movies are Dracula's Daughter, Blood and Roses, and uh, Hammer's Karnstein trilogy, just to name a few. Often these examples are rooted in homophobia and patriarchal ideas as the Carmilla character is seen as a corrupting force for the young women and some white straight guy has to come in and save the day, making everything right again. Just like I made that video about uh, why the werewolf trope, I think, should be picked up by the girls, gays, and theys. You can watch that video up here. Like, vampires are also a pretty natural, like, metaphor for sexual attraction, sexual behavior. Like, the way vampires hunt and feed, it's pretty obviously sexual. There's fangs that, you know, penetrate flesh, there's an exchange of fluids, and there's usually that kind of seduction, i.e. hypnosis that is involved when a vampire hunts their prey also. And queer vampires seem like a natural extension of this. It's the blood that attracts them, so we often see vampires attacking anyone regardless of gender identity. Unfortunately though, many of the lesbian vampire movies, especially the exploitative ones of the 1970s, uh, were made mostly to titillate a heterosexual male audience. 
And while I haven't seen every single lesbian vampire movie out there working on it, you have a love-hate relationship with these movies because on one hand it's like, hey, sapphic rep in a movie, awesome. And then on the other hand, said sapphic vampire has to be defeated at the hands of heteronormativity. That being said though, I do have a few favorites which I thought I would share also in this video because I feel like it, it, I have to throw out some recommendations, right? And these are in no particular order, but the first one I'll mention is the let I almost called it the lesbian vampire lovers. <laughs> the vampire lovers. <laughs> This was my like go-to kind of like favorite for a long time because I really hadn't seen any other sapphic vampire movies. Um, not that I hate it now. It's still okay as far as exploitative lesbian vampire movies go and Ingrid Pitt is magnetic. I mean she can bite my neck anytime. But now that I've watched a few more movies I don't know that I would necessarily call it my favorite anymore. I still consider it a classic though and I do have a soft spot for it. Daughters of Darkness <laughs> is one that I think initially I wasn't as into but the more I've watched it the more I just realized what a vibe it is. Like I feel like Daughters of Darkness walked so the hunger could run. But it's just it's all vibes. Like when I say like sapphic vampire I think of being like an ageless blood sucking being just spending my days sprawled out on hotel furniture in gorgeous clothes. Is that the undead life or what? I also like how this one uses um, the Countess Batori instead of Carmilla, you know, just to mix things up a little bit like because it's like every single one of them has to be based on one of those two things. Another kind of favorite, it's more in a like it's really ultra cheesy so it's kind of funny to watch sort of way, The Velvet Vampire. And this movie is what I feel like vampires should be, like I mentioned. Just would make more sense that vampires be pansexual. I mentioned earlier like we all have blood in our bodies and that's what vampires want. And it also kind of gives me, you know, like the vibes, like Daughters of Darkness, like the outfits, the setting, all iconic. The dialogue is cheesy as fuck, but that's what makes it fun. Like you can kind of watch it in a silly way, kind of make fun of it sort of way. Making a huge time jump now, the next one I want to mention is Carmilla 2019. This one makes the vampirism a little more metaphorical. There's some blood, no fangs. <laughs> I was drawn into the tragic story of two young girls who love each other and are torn apart by bigotry and superstition. It's got a sad ending but I'm a water sign so I'm kind of into that. <laughs> and I feel like this movie is kind of meta in a way. I like the approach to it. Maybe I'm reaching but if you've watched any episode of Does This Offend You you know I am very flexible when it comes to reaching for metaphors and meanings in movies that aren't really there. But like the whole idea behind vampires in media, be it TV shows, movies, books, whatever, is like a representation of what society views as taboo sexual behavior. So the vampirism is merely suggested in the film and the religious characters see the girls love for each other as as abhorrent and surely they must be vampires because otherwise they wouldn't be into each other, right? That could never happen because gays did not exist back in the day. So they condemn them to death simply based on superstition. So I don't know if that was the intended purpose of that but I'm gonna that's I'm gonna just pretend that that's what the purpose was and I think it was really brilliantly done. <laughs> and of course there's Bit. Um, the focus in Bit is more on a group of queer vampire baddies killing predatory men in LA and less kind of on romance. That's what makes this one stand out for me. It's not a Carmilla story. It's fresh, it's unique, we love it. Um, it's not that unique but I mean for sapphic vampires it's unique when every other one is based on Countess Batori or Carmilla. Although kind of like the Velvet Vampire the dialogue is a little bit on the cringy side. Also there is a lot more representation in this movie besides the sapphicness of it which we also love. So please 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 in the comments share your favorite sapphic vampire movies, TV shows, books especially in the comments. I have a hard time finding like sapphic vampire books besides Carmilla. Again I feel like it's just 
that's all that there is and I know that can't be true so if you've read any that you really liked please suggest them to me in the comments <laughs> and let me know if there's any other topics you want me to cover for education like besides just single movies like which I'll still continue to do but or any books also because I feel like we we could talk about some queer horror books because why the fuck not? Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. Subscribe if you're new here. Become a creepy peep today. I will see you on Wednesday with a creepy book club live stream at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're talking about our November read, which was The Chestnut Man. And then after that, another new video, of course, next week on Saturday. So until then, stay strange. Bye.